Hi everyone, Pitch Canker here. I am a horror artist and I wanted to chat today about why I don't think you're actually desensitized to horror. Um, unsurprisingly to most, I've been a huge consumer of horror my whole life and as I've gotten older and horror has become more mainstream, I've noticed myself becoming not as afraid of things and not as afraid of horror generally. And you know, I kind of chalked this up to producing horror media as an artist constantly day in and day out, but I think in reality it's a symptom of the culture surrounding horror currently. You know, since horror is trending right now and becoming more and more mainstream, in my opinion at the very least, um, I've noticed a lot of discussions around desensitization of horror, um, you know, and I've felt it too, personally. But what I think is actually happening is that in a mainstream sense, we are consuming one brand of horror, you know? Horror can come from anything, but the content that dominates the market right now is a type of horror that I think is fun. The type of horror that is digestible. And I'm mostly referring to the film and video game industries. But what I think has to be acknowledged for me and the other people concerned about being desensitized to horror is that we aren't the target audience for these films or for these games. You know, we're feeling desensitized because what we're viewing feels formulaic, watered down. Um, you know, it doesn't feel as creative as it once did. And why is this? Um, the way I like to think about it is like this. You're someone who has never been big into horror, right? You're just like a random person. You're just, you usually watch like action movies or whatever, right? And a film comes out and you have a bunch of your friends who want to go see it and you're excited. You know, you go pick a day to go to the movies. You take a day off. You sit down with your popcorn and your snacks and you see the most horrific film of your life. You are disgusted. You have nightmares afterwards and you decide that you're never going to see a film by this director ever again. Uh, it just turns you off from the genre in general and your interest to find other films like it is non-existent now this is important because it goes to show that there are just different levels right to people who are experiencing horror and i really believe a majority of people who are like going to watch movies in the theater like this are just going for like a like a thrill they're going for like a cheap thrill they're not really like you know their life isn't horror. They're not super invested or involved in it. It's not like one of their main favorite genres. They're just going to go see a horror movie. And people just don't expect a lot out of horror movies for that reason. Because it doesn't... The bar is very low for people who are entering the genre. And I think the same goes for artwork or games or whatever, right? If you're a kid and you're playing a scary game, anything's going to scare you. You know, Roblox games are going to scare you. Um, even my own art, I post it. My scariest pieces don't, you know, have huge numbers. It's the ones that I think are the most basic. So I don't see desensitization, I see experience and perspective. You know, when I was a kid, I used to watch horror movies almost every night and then I would go up to bed and I would be so afraid, I would run up the stairs, I wouldn't look back, I had like little rituals to keep myself safe. I was terrified of the genre, but as I got older and I watched those same movies, I was like, oh, you know, I've seen this before, you know, it's just another slasher movie, it's another monster movie, I'm not actually afraid of the content. Now the movies that scare me are more cerebral, or they're more, you know, talking about a wider variety of subjects, you know, I'm just growing, you know, it's, it's about growing up, it's about understanding that other things scare me, it's about looking at a movie like Lake Mungo, right, which, you know, didn't perform very well in the box office at all, and had, you know, this big budget or whatever, but it's widely considered one of the greatest horror movies of all time, you know, it's a slow burn, it has this kind of, like, dreadful atmosphere, it's about loss in a lot of ways, it's like the saddest horror movie ever made, and for me, that sadness, I get goosebumps thinking about it. You know, it's combining sadness with horror, which I'm like, wow, I have, I don't see that too often. You know, it's very uncommon. Usually horror is conflated with like violence and like scares and not, you know, it, it, it takes advantage of the tropes of the genre instead of diving deeper and saying like, maybe this is what fear actually looks like. Like a good question is, am I looking at the right media right now, right? Something that the horror community might love in a niche way, the wider audience wouldn't, it wouldn't even get on their radar, right? Like horror movies that are mainstream, are, you know, that are making a lot in the box office, they aren't for us. You know, where Lake Mungo succeeds in making me scared is the fact that it felt so real. It didn't take a lot for me to imagine the scenario actually happening to put myself you know, with these people that the film is about, I found that most people don't want to be confronted with that, that kind of like serious subject matter, you know? The movies we're seeing now that are growing in popularity that are kind of like more entry level horror aren't made for people who are, you know, very experienced in horror, right? Um, it doesn't excuse the quality of a lot of these films, but I think this kind of horror is made to be fun and digestible. It's not trying to be good. And you might say, well, fun, you know, this guy got thrown into a wood chipper. How is that fun? You know, but like whether it be like violence or a monster, it's predictable. It ends on a predictable note. You know, the bad guy comes back at the end. He's not actually dead. You know, you feel satisfied because you're predicting like, oh, no, don't hide in the corner. They're going to get you, you know. Um, 
it isn't to say that every horror film needs to mess you up or make you ruminate over what scared you, but you know, the feeling that I'm craving and the feeling that I mistook as being desensitized is actually just yearning for something less predictable and more creative. So one of the main reasons I made this current video is because of my own community, actually. Um, I made a video recently called uh, How I Make My Artwork Creepy. And the responses to this video kind of drove the idea for this current video. And I'll, I want to explain because this video got about 200,000 views and there were a lot of comments. There were about 500 comments and a lot of them were like paragraphs. So, you know, thank you everybody for the interaction there. But what I wanted to go over was something that I saw within my audience, within my community. Um, I saw a lot of comments that had to do with, you know, what people were afraid of and what didn't scare people anymore. And that, you know, when I was going over all these subjects about creepiness, a lot of people were like, well, that doesn't scare me. Um, that doesn't bother me at all. There's only like one or two things that actually scare me. And a lot of people shared this sentiment of ha only having a small range of things that actually scared them for the most part and that they've become desensitized to most horror. Like, you know, they, they see, you know, me drawing like a skull ripping its head open and being like, well, that's like a, an average Wednesday, you know what I mean? Like, where's the meat to this? And, you know, I thought that was really interesting. And I thought that was something that I wanted to explore more. And so, you know, uh, I, I spent some time thinking, I decided to ask my community uh, via a poll and see what they thought. And so 1,700 people responded to this poll and the poll asked, are you desensitized to horror? And I gave three separate answers that you could give. And I think the results of these answers is actually very telling of kind of the current state of horror and like the way people think about it in general. And I know there's probably a bias within my audience because, you know, there are people who probably appreciate horror and the macabre, but I do think it's still a very interesting set of data to examine. So for the first response, it was 24% of the vote and it was, yes, it's hard for me to be afraid of things. Now, I was honestly surprised this wasn't more like 10% to 15% or something like that. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes along with the theme of this video, which a lot of people feel like they are desensitized to horror. That is a big amount. That is a quarter of my audience. So to the quarter of you that participated, thank you uh, for following my work, even though it doesn't scare you. Um, I think this is important to notice. It's important to you know, regardless if these people have fears or not, they feel fearless. They feel like they are unimpressed with the status quo of horror, uh, and they're generally desensitized to this type of media and this type of content. And I wonder, and that's why I, I made this video to kind of challenge this, I wonder if that's like, you know, actually just being truly desensitized to the point where no horror scares you, or if perhaps uh, there's just a horror out there that hasn't spoken to you in a long time because you've moved past what is traditionally considered good horror. Now, the second answer with 64% of the vote was somewhat certain things scare me. And I think this to me is like a very telling way to see how people really feel about horror, right? I, I really think this is kind of like the majority of people. And I'm happy that the results kind of showed that in the poll because I think everyone has their personal fears on some level, right? Even some of the most fearless people um, unless they're totally devoid of emotion, have something that freaks them out, have an existential dread, have something that they do not want to be confronted by. But, you know, they have things that don't bother them at all. You know, like I am not afraid of spiders whatsoever, but there are plenty of people who do not ever want to be anywhere close or in the presence of a spider, right? Um, I think it's important to note this group because I think it kind of shows the vast majority of people, right? Most people are open to the idea of being afraid but if you put them in front of something like maybe like a slasher movie or something or like a, a game where you have to run away from a spooky creature, they're not going to be, you know, super faced by it. Now, finally, we have at 11 percent. No, many things in the world are frightening. Now, these people, they understand the world is a frightening place. Right. Um, and, you know, actually, this is kind of more than I expected for this category. So um, it kind of lends itself in a different direction where like, you know, the overexposure to all the horrible things could make you fearful as well. And I get that too. It's one of those things where um, maybe this is the opposite of uh, desensitization where they're overly sensitive because of the amount of media being fed. So that might be a different video, but I do think it's interesting to note that, you know, that's one out of 10 people who voted on this felt that way. Now there's a lot of variables here. Um, you know, it's one of those things where we can't assume everybody's experiences or life, but it is interesting to just see the numbers and just see how people generally feel towards horror as a whole, right? 
So those are the results of the poll, but I would like to go over some of the comments that were left under this poll. Now, um, there were also a bunch of amazing comments left under my last video, and I wanna do a video responding to some of them because you guys left these huge, beautiful paragraphs of just like information, your experience. I think it'd be really cool to go over as a community, as like a discussion video. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. But onto the top comment under this post, um, it's from Ashley Bebby, I hope I said that right. But Ashley said, I don't think I'm necessarily desensitized to it entirely, but what I've seen recently isn't enough. Like my tolerance has increased, but the content hasn't improved much, specifically in cinema. The horror that I enjoy most is psychological, I suppose. But a lot of what I've been consuming is slasher and gore focused, and some of it felt a little repetitive. I love this comment. I love it because it demands more from the medium. It demands more from horror as a genre. You know, you touch on, you know, how there is horror. There are things you enjoy about the genre, but you know, it's not doing enough right now. It's the same old, same old. It's the, you know, the, the cut and paste idea of what horror is. It's a, it's constant repetition of the same thing. And I think it's really good to demand this of people, you know, who are working in this medium and in this genre, right? Um, I think that, complacency just kind of breeds the same thing over and over again where if you're like hey this doesn't scare me i'm not impressed by this anymore i'm bored of it you know there are going to be people out there who are going to push it to the limits who are going to say yeah you're not scared of this let me work on this let me let me try and do it and that's how you come up with some of the best pieces of art right um when something like that breaks through you're like wow this is exactly how it should be Right. It's those revolutionary pieces of media that are born out of contempt for the genre. And I'm really excited uh, for like the future state of horror because I think there's going to be a lot of this. So Ashley Bebby, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. And this is from Michael McCafferty, uh, 3131. Uh, Michael said, age and experience are funny. I'm less afraid of things that terrified me when I was young, but overwhelmingly frightened of things that I would have considered tame only a decade ago. Michael, I'm with you. I, you know, I was a fan when I was younger of really intense, like, you know, monster movies and violent slasher movies and things like that. And I couldn't understand a movie like The Blair Witch Project, let's say. I'm like, oh, it's a bunch of people hanging around the woods. Like, where's the witch? Like, what's the point of this? And I watch it, you know, like 10 years later and I'm like, oh my God, this is stressing me out so bad. These guys are lost in the woods. Like, where's the witch? And I think ultimately that's a great thing to take into account, that time, age, experience can really change your perception of horror, what is scary, what isn't scary. So to everyone who responded to the poll or commented or whatever on any of my videos, thank you guys so much. I love looking over these. They really help me dissect the subject and really think about it a little bit more. And I love these videos as discussion pieces. So if you have anything to say, you know, don't be afraid to comment. I love these discussions. I want to do a video where I respond to a lot of these comments and kind of go over horror more with you guys. Um, I think it's a genre that is very pigeonholed at times. And I think there's just a lot of uh, potential for discussion, for, you know, kind of a new wave to come along and to kind of just create better horror in general. So thank you to everybody who has been participating in stuff like this. I really appreciate it. Finally, I just want to plug myself really quickly. I am an illustrator. All the illustrations that were done in the back of this video are my own work. And if you're interested in a commission or something, please feel free to reach out. I have a form uh, in the video link below. And so you can check that out. Um, I work on all types of projects from tattoos to album covers to like custom original character commissions. I'm down for anything for the most part. So just shoot me a message. Second, if you want to support the Patreon, I will put your name at the end of each video. These videos are largely possible because of my Patreon supporters, so thank you guys so much. You're the best. You're the reason these videos are happening. Thank you. Also, shout out to my partner Mika for helping me write the script for this and just kind of helping me organize my thoughts. This was kind of like a bigger video for me, and I just wanted to thank her for keeping me on track. So, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like videos like this. I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback. Have a great rest of your day.